There's a rather famous scene in a movie called A Man for All Seasons. It's a movie about St. Thomas More, one of the very few people who remain faithful to the truth, to the church, to the faith in the English Reformation. The scene comes very near the end of the movie when Thomas has been falsely accused, betrayed by one who was his friend, and is now sentenced to death. He looks at this man named Rich and realizes he has a new piece of jewelry on his outfit. He says, what is this? The other person, Cromwell, tells him he's just been named Attorney General for Wales. And Thomas More, with such pity in his eyes, looks at him and says, Rich, it profits a man nothing to lose his soul for the whole world, but for Wales? This tiny little place in Great Britain, that's what he gave his soul up for. That's where his soul would stay. This came to mind today with St. Paul's very strong words in the second reading. He's writing to the Ephesians, which was a very pagan land. It was overrun with the Greek gods and goddesses. And he's writing to them and says, Watch carefully how you live, not as foolish persons, but as wise. This wouldn't go over so well in most places today. Don't be fools. Don't be ignorant, he's telling them. But in the context, it's so important because he says the days are evil. Now, he wrote that 2,000 years ago, but it, the same is true today. The world is fallen. There are forces intent on destroying us. And there are people in the world that want to work with those forces, with Satan and his minions, to destroy the church, to remove God from everything, to take away everything that is good, true, beautiful, and holy. And then what are we left with? Whales. Just the things of this world. Nothing that will sustain us. We're left on our own. The days are evil. Do not act as foolish persons, but as wise. St. Paul continues then, Do not continue in ignorance, but try to understand the will of the Lord. This is so important, especially in an election year like this one. Too many times people will go through big decisions in their life without any preparation, with no prayer, with no discernment, with no prudence or virtue, and we see the results on the news. The many deaths that happen so tragically, even in our own community. The violence, the hatred. So we have to come to the Lord first and foremost to know what is it that He wants. Not the politicians, not the newscasters, not even our own selves, because we cannot trust our fallen hearts. But what does God want of us? What does He expect of us? Those are powerful words. Do not continue in ignorance. In a sense, in, in a sense, St. Paul is telling us, don't be stupid about the important things in your life. Take the time to approach them intelligently. God has given us the gift of reason, and we have to use it. No wonder St. Paul follows up by saying, don't get drunk on wine, but be filled with the Spirit. He's doing two things here. First, saying, don't be drunk. That's never a good thing. Again, in our own community, we see how bad that can make lives, the lives of people when there's drunkenness, drunkenness surrounding us at every corner. But more than this, he's saying, don't just get drunk on wine. Be inebriated with the Spirit. Be so involved in the life of God that He is the one that sates your soul. That you eat and drink His body and blood. That you, you breathe His Spirit. This fits well with what we hear in the gospel today. Jesus is telling the Israelites, all of these earthly things, the food and drink that you have, the power, the prestige, whales, will amount to nothing. Even the miraculous manna in the Old Testament disappeared. But God himself remains. And so Jesus is telling his apostles, his disciples, anyone that will listen, my food is my flesh for the life of the world. My body is true food, and my blood is true drink. This, of course, anticipates what he will do at the Last Supper, when he says, this is my body, this is my blood. Take, eat, drink. That's what we do at Mass. We receive that Eucharist as our true food, 
as the only food which will actually satisfy us because the longing that God has placed in our heart is so great that only he can fill it. And he has made it so that he can do so in a way that we can approach in what just looks like bread, but is truly Jesus Christ. We can come to him to receive all that we need. If we return to St. Paul, he tells us to be filled with the Spirit and to address one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs and to sing to the Lord in our hearts. Now, I don't think this means that our households have to turn into a musical, but what we must do is speak to each other and to God in similar ways. St. James, in his own letter, chapter 3, says, How often do people bless the Lord and curse one another? The way that we pray, the way that we speak to God, must influence the way that we speak to one another. And so the things that we hear chanted or read in this place must influence the way we speak and act with one another, so that our whole lives become a canticle of praise to God, even in those simple silent acts wherein we can give God praise, we can help others come to know him. As I said, this is so important in an election year. Because too many times, people will put political preferences over the faith. They will look to everyone except God to help them make their decisions. And this is why we see so many Catholics at at odds with the faith, with what God reveals, with what the church teaches, with what the gospel preaches. This can't be the case. Otherwise, we're settling for whales, and we lose our souls in the process. So in this reading and in the truth that God is giving us in the Eucharist, we have to remember that the eternal truths last forever, and those are the only ones that will satisfy us. But when we settle for any sort of political punditry or spend more time in news and on social media than in prayer and with good people and living the faith, the faith well, we're settling for whales, and we lose our souls. So I encourage you admonish you, warn you if need be. Put God first. Put the faith first in everything, and not just in an election year, but in every decision you make, in everything you do, in what you read, what you don't read, because in that way, you won't be drunk on the things of this world, but be filled with the Spirit. Part of this, as St. Paul says, is not continuing in ignorance. This, of course, means knowing what the people that you're voting for support and putting the faith first, but it also means knowing your faith. The Catechism of the Catholic Church is a great resource we have for that. You don't have to look in a hundred different books. The Church has already given you one book that you can start well with, and you can go from there. But that's the essentials of what we must believe, the creed, the sacraments, morality, and prayer. And if you read that, you'll see over and over the beauty of our faith and how it fulfills us. The ignorance of sin and death will be wiped away, and you'll see how truly fulfilling the life of the Spirit is, what the Church offers us. So I'm going to, I usually give you homework, but I'm giving you a bit more this week. Before the election, I want you to read the section on the Ten Commandments. It's not super long, you can make it by then, but to inform your conscience, to remove any ignorance that might be there, and to help your heart seek after things that are above, not the things on this earth. Because Wales isn't worth it. God is. So make that time for study, for prayer, for God. And then in your prayer, as you're singing to him, singing to one another in songs, hymns, and spiritual songs, you'll see how cheap this world is and its promises, but how lasting and true and fulfilling God's promises are. We already have a foretaste of fulfillment here at this altar with this true food and this true drink. So as you come to communion today or as you make a spiritual communion, remember what he has done for you, that he cannot fail, that he is truth itself who can neither deceive nor be deceived, and follow him above all else, putting aside ignorance, putting aside the evil days for the great day of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior.